Hey guys, thanks for tuning in today. Darkwing Dead here again with another fun uh, 3D print tips and tricks pro tutorial, I guess you could say. Um, basically, in today's video, we're going to cover some advanced machine polishing. This is something that's a lot different uh, than what we did in the uh, wet sanding video with the drill. Uh, this is something that is uh, really going to be able to get your prints to pop, uh, give you that shine, that luster, that gloss, that richness that really makes it look um, like it came off of the showroom floor. Uh, very similar to the Mark 50 here. So uh, if you're looking to get your prints to look this good, obviously you're going to want to watch my wet sanding video. That's going to kind of break down how the process starts, how you start wet sanding and refining um, all of those orange peel and all those blemishes, maybe runs and imperfections that you get from aerosol. Um, after that, we have to further refine and polish. So what this video is going to cover is that whole process. It's going to cover some essential machines and polishing media that you're going to need to get your prints looking just like this one here. Uh, so tune in. If you guys have any comments or questions in the video, please leave them in the comment section. Uh, of course, I do appreciate a like and subscribe. If there's anything I went over that I missed, please let me know. But sit back and enjoy the video and let me know what you guys think. Thanks. All right, hey, what's up guys? Uh, thank you for tuning in today. Uh, today we are gonna be doing uh, some advanced polishing techniques uh, to your 3D prints. So these are gonna be uh, basically prints that you have clear coated, you have wet sanded, and you want them polished and refined to uh, basically the highest ability uh, possible. Uh, obviously, you need a machine, so we're going to be using some things a little bit differently, uh, different products, something that would be, um, I mean, a hobbyist could still use, but um, you know, these are a lot more in-depth. We're not using a drill. Uh, we're going for a higher level of clarity. We're trying to really get this thing uh, as, as defect-free as possible. So um, leaving off where I did with, with the helmet before, you know, I basically went through and I did a 3,000 grit and then a 5,000 grit wet sand um, and, and buffed and polished it and refined it. So I did a three-stage polish and it wasn't bad, but it wasn't where I wanted it. So I figured I would do this video um, basically showing polishing um, and explaining why you need to polish. So when you wet sand, understand you're using something that is abrasive. Um, so you have paint that basically has all these waves and all these ripples and we want to smooth that out. But when you do that, you scratch this up. That's why that's why it's all hazy. Okay, and you can see the areas where um, I didn't really go over because these are, are are they're just far too intricate. I've got that that pin striping on there. I don't want to mess that up. I didn't really touch. I got the front here, but I didn't really go in there because you'll never get in there and get it a hundred percent. So there's in some cases where you just have to let certain things let be. I didn't even touch them here because again, it's so intricate. It's a light color, you won't even see it. But you can tell with my light hitting it how distorted the light is. We need to smooth that out. So we've taken something that was clear and shiny, we've smoothed it out, now we need to refine it. So we need to use less and less uh, parts and pieces of agitation to give this a proper finish, to smooth everything out, to give it that gloss, to give it that shine, to give it that luster. And that's what we're gonna do. Um, so, as I said, um, I got a call here. I'm, I'm, I'm banging out, so don't mind the noise in the background. Um, what uh, what I've done is I've gone back through, and I've hit this with two thousand grit, and then three thousand grit and five thousand grit, and a majority of those little. I'll show you on the front here because I still didn't go too crazy. There's like these, it's this orange peel, almost like these freckles. Um, I've, I've gotten rid of the majority of them on the helmet. You can still see some of them on here. 
again, you, you got to you gotta kind of pick and choose your battles. You know, if you fully commit and understand that you could, um, yeah, you could get rid of them, you could also get rid of the pink, which I don't want to do. So I've gone through and wet sanded this a second time, three stages, 2,000, 3,000, 5,000. Now I'm going to polish it. I'm going to refine it. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to buff this, I'm going to polish this, and I'm going to do an ultra, an ultra or a finishing polish on this to smooth everything out. So in each stage, um, we're going to change the polishing media and the um, polishing or the uh, refinement aspect of it. So we're going to do a compound, we're going to do uh, a medium polish, and then a finishing polish. So with each stage that we change, we're going to change the media along with it. Um, basically, we're going to start with a wool pad. We're going to move to a heavy polishing pad. We're going to move to a light polishing pad, and then we're going to move to a finishing polishing pad. So with each stage, you'll see it get better. We are not using a drill. We are not using your hand. If you try to polish with your hand, you're going to get very mediocre results. Your hand does not move fast enough. There's no way you're really going to get rid of those defects. You might bring some of the shine back. Um, it's, it's just not the right way to do it. So um, you can use the drill. Um, it's just, it's still not as controlled as this method. Um, this, you can control your speed. There's variable speed. It pads more. It, it's just, there, there's a better swing to the oscillation of the head of the polisher. It's not just a driven force. It oscillates and moves. It's got a little bit of a throw. It's an eight millimeter. So it has a little bit of a, a, a movement within the oscillation. Biggest thing is the speed and just the fact that this is a, a free spinning controlled polisher um, is going to give you a lot better results. So what we're going to do, oh, and sorry. So this is, probably should mention this. So this is a flex polisher, okay? Um, I've said before that it's not that this is not for hobbyists, but this is a $250, $300 polisher. Um, obviously, I use this in my profession every day, so I have one of these laying around. Um, could you get this? Absolutely. Um, would I recommend going out and buying this just to do these helmets? I guess that's your call. If you're wanting to produce these for, um, you know, to make money for profit, then sure, absolutely, you know. Um, I guess it's really just up to you, but I have these. Um, most people resort to the drill because who doesn't have a drill laying around? Um, but again, with these, you know, the pads, different types of pads, the polishes, all this stuff, all this money adds up. I've probably got, um, you know, just in product here, um, you know, probably about $350 to $375 in product. So if you're only doing a couple helmets, you need it, the drill method with some cheap, cheaper polish from Walmart may be uh, better for you. Basically what I'm doing, I'm going to clean this pad out real quick, so let me just do that before we get started. You always want to make sure that your pad is clean and you've got the, uh, the fibers here nice and clean. You don't want debris, you don't want them clumped together. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a compound. Uh, and I will list the products that I use in this tutorial. This is a compound called P1. It's by a company called Clear Finish. So it is a professional grade compound. So again, if you want to get into getting that stuff, I can leave you the links. But most compounds in this scenario will work the same. I just have this stuff laying around, so I'm going to use it and show you the results I get. So really what you want to do with this, when I do this method, you have to understand, you're going to be using one hand. So this is not for a novice. So I would not recommend going out and trying this right away. I would get a junk piece. You know, you're not really going to be able to use this like a normal polisher. It's just it's, it's too intricate. I like to do the one-handed method. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep my, my, my speed low. I'm going to leave it in between settings two and three, which is roughly about 2,000 OPMs or oscillations per minute, and just start breaking all this down. So what this is going to do is this is a more aggressive pad. It's going to get rid of some of these scratches and some of these deeper defects. And then with each level that we go, it's going to refine and smooth out. It's going to get rid of more defects and more defects and more defects without adding new ones. When you use a wool pad, it gets rid of deep defects, but it puts its own new defects in it. And that's why you use another pad, and then another pad, and go up from there. So that's the process that we're going to do. So I'm basically just going to show you my method. What I do is whenever I'm, I'm using this, one, I have the cord going over my shoulder so I can keep it in control. Okay. And then I basically just take my hand here, and whatever area I'm doing, I just go very, very slow over it. Um, what I'm actually going to do here is just a Move the camera. So 
So what I'm going to do is basically take this, I'm going to start with the top. I'm going to spread this out. I'll change my grip here a little bit, see how this goes. No, I don't think I like that. I'm going to try it like this. I'm going to try it like this here, and basically just start buffing this with one hand. So some, some key points with this polisher is it has a locking trigger, which is nice so your, your thumb doesn't wear out when you're doing it with a drill. Your hand can start to cramp up, which is not fun. Um, but you'll notice that the pad slowly starts to clump up, and that's because it's generating heat. You always want to make sure that you're keeping that pad moving. Um, you are not going to get rid of all the defects in one pass and, and don't try to do that. So it is a multiple stage process, um, and that's why we have all these pads and different polishes and whatnot out. So. Um, so after you do one pass, I just kind of wipe it down and, and take a look at it, and it's not going to be anywhere near 100%. I'm just kind of scratching the surface here. So usually what I do is I just kind of look and see, all right, where else? You can see there's some areas where I didn't really get all that well. So I'm going to again clean my pad out here. I'm actually going to switch to another tab that I used on the drill. A little bit fluffier, carries a little bit more surface area, so I'm going to grab that. It's a little bit bigger. It's still a three inch backing plate, but the pad itself is about four inches. I don't recommend going too big. This is probably the biggest pad I would use on a, on a polish like this, especially for uh, someone just getting into this. I've used six inch polishers and things like that on here, but I, like I said, I would not jump into doing that right away. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the same process here. I'm just go back over this area and try to uh, get this a little bit cleaner. Patience is the key when you're doing this, okay? Like I said, you're not going to knock out every single defect with one pad and with one pass. And chances are, if you're OCD like me, you're going to go through all three or four steps, look at it and say, eh, I got to touch it up here, 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 and then almost do the whole process twice. You, there's, just, there's no way you're going to get it done in your first shot. I don't even do that. It's just not, it's, you can't. <laughs> but you can already see how much clearer it is. Now, I don't know if the camera's picking it up. I did this little setup here because I have an LED light right above me. There's all kinds of little swirls in the paint, okay? When you have those on, it causes what's, what's called refraction. So when the light hits it, instead of hitting it and bouncing back, it hits it, it distorts it, fragments it, and it shoots out and it looks distorted. So instead of being a straight, clear line, it's coming down, hitting this, and then basically breaking into a million pieces going that way. So it's not as clear as it could be. It's called refraction. That's what happens when there's swirls in your paint. If you've ever had a, a black car or a dark car, You've seen one that's all polished up and it looks good. You're saying, man, that looks sharp. That looks crisp. Why is that? Because the light is reflecting off of it when it's smooth and when it's not all swirled up. This causes distortion. It bends the light. It looks distorted. It's not as, as shiny, as clean as it could be. We're going to fix that, though. Okay, so you're going to go over your whole helmet. And, you know, what I'm actually going to do, I'll do it real quick here. I'll kind of show you. Um, you know, when you've got areas up in the front here that are a little bit flatter that you can put a second hand on, you can hit those. So I'm going to hit this nose here real quick. This would be more of a widow's peak on the nose. The nose would be down here. That's okay. And the 
really right here is there's just there's some orange peel. It's bugging the heck out of me. I'm probably going to end up going back and sanding it again, but trying to do what I can do here. Help you guys out. All right, so let's say we've done the whole helmet. We're done with the wool pad for now. We're not going to touch it. We're going to move into the heavy polishing or medium polishing pad. Now, if you want, you can use the same compound. It's okay because it's still a heavier pad. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to move on to what's called Optimum Hyper Polish. Sorry, my battery's low here. I'm hitting the screen. Um, this is a very versatile polish. It's open to the public. You can buy it on Optimum's website, Amazon, eBay. It's a fantastic, fantastic polish. Just because it's an open market product, don't sleep on it. It works great. You, in theory, could use this product beginning to end, but I'm just kind of showing you guys different alternatives here. Um, so I'm going to use that polish with this pad. I'm going to basically do the same thing. But just look at, remember this image here, okay? Watch how much cleaner it gets after this. Doing the same method, same speed, nothing's changing but the pad and the polish. All right, now, again, I don't know how well the camera picks this up. Hopefully you're seeing the clarity. There's a little bit of swirls right here. Spot in this, I'm going to hit that real quick. Try to make that look a little bit better. Some schmutz on the lands. So I had my phone flipped around. A little bit. Can you tell? It's like the camera's in the way now. What happened? <laughs> So, not sure how well you can tell from um, from that standpoint, but it's it's already cleaning it up and clearing it up, and there's still swirls and there's still things we have to knock down. Um, but what's nice about when you know when you go to the foam pad is you don't have to worry about it generating quite as much heat. It's not as aggressive as the wool pad. So when you see some of these swirls here, which I can see, and always do this in a well-lit area. Don't do this in a garage. You need some sort of LED lighting to see these defects. Um, but I've got some, some stuff right here. I'm gonna knock down real quick. <laughs> So what's really nice about the medium polishing pad is if you do have some scratches and swirls, you know, understand that this isn't like car paint, it's a little bit different. So if you spend just a little bit of time with that foam pad, it's going to knock those defects out. So hopefully you can kind of see that from there. So essentially what you're going to do is you're going to repeat that process with your last two pads, your light polishing pad, and then your finishing pad. You're gonna do the same thing, okay, same speed. Sometimes you can kick the speed up a 
tad bit on the polishing, um, if you're comfortable doing that. Um, essentially, if you do that, you want to decrease your pressure a little bit. But when you do that, it's really just going to make the helmet start coming, you know, full circle. So I will very quickly do the top of the helmet to see if the camera can pick up any difference. So now what I'm doing is I am using that same Optimum Hyper Polish with a light polishing pad. And then I'm using a ultra finishing polish made by 3D. I don't know if that's backwards or not because the way my phone is. Um, and we're using a ultra fine finishing pad. So I'm going to do the same thing with both these pads. I'm going to hyper -let this and then we'll talk a little bit at the end. Hope you enjoyed that. I certainly did. All right, so now, important thing too, um, this is just a, I mean, this is a, a, a auto fiber, uh, microfiber towel. Uh, it's actually uh, a little bit different than your standard microfiber towel, but you can just use new hyper, or uh, new, <laughs> and new hyper, new uh, microfiber towels. You can get them at like Sam's Club, and that's all this is, and I use these often. It's just like a Costco towel, or, or Sam's Club, or BJ's, whatever, uh, places by you. Uh, you, know, you can just use them brand new and they work fine. Uh, this is an optimum um, finishing towel. Uh, you can see how, how fluffy it is and I tend to like to use these when uh, when I'm doing my final polish because they're super, super soft. They won't re-swirl the paint. Um, hopefully you can see how shiny it is. I, don't, I think my phone is pretty much blocking everything, but I'm going to get you guys some video here and kind of show you in a minute. Um, I'm actually going to take the phone and unclip it here. So hopefully you guys are picking this up here. Um, you can see just how clean the reflection in the image is. Um, you can see a little bit of orange peel. You can see some of those craters and stuff like that. Again, it, you're, it's really up to your expectations. You don't want to take off too much clear. You take off too much clear and you're going to be uh, repainting the whole thing. So, um, But this is a huge difference compared to what it was. And obviously when it's wet sanded, you can see that it's all hazy and doesn't look anything like it should. This is where we want to get it at. So doing that polishing there is exactly what you need. So again, you need yourself a good polisher, dual action polisher, a wool pad for cutting. That's like using 80 grit or 100 grit sandpaper. You need your medium or your heavy polishing pad. That would be like using 220 and then you've got your light polishing pads that's basically like using maybe 400 or 600 and then this would be like using something a thousand or higher uh, and it's okay to use a uh, higher speed on this because this is a much more delicate it's it's softer you know um you know you can work around the edges you can even see how i was able to kind of smooth out some of those little um Improve. I mean, they're still there, but they look a heck of a lot smoother. So don't be afraid to spend more time with the light polishing and the finishing polish because you'd be surprised how much they get out of this. These paints aren't like car paints. They don't, have, they don't have as much acrylic. They're not as durable. They're not as thick. They're not as heavy. So in all honesty, you could actually completely eliminate this pad and do all these. It would just take you a lot longer. It's kind of like how, you know, I start with maybe 1500 grit sandpaper um, and then go to, you know, 3,000 and 5,000. You can wet sand a whole helmet with just 3,000 grit and 5,000 grit sandpaper. It's just going to take you longer. Some people don't want to just dive in. Um, you know, there's a rule when it comes to restoration and refinishing. It's the least aggressive method first. So always remember that. Um, always test. If you're unsure, try something in the middle of the road and see how that works and go up from there. But ultimately what I'll do is I'm going to go over this whole helmet here, uh, buff it, polish it, refine it, get it smoothed out. Um, I'll post some pictures here at the end of the video, some before and after, so you can actually see how the helmet looked 
before I even wet sanded it and what wet sanding and polishing to this level actually does. Um, down the road, I'll probably do a video that um, actually shows the difference between hand polishing, you know, polishing with a drill and polishing with something like this. But, you know, mark my words. Um, I mean, hopefully you can see. I mean, this is incredibly, incredibly crisp and clear. Um, and there, there's not texture on there. It's actually my ceiling. My ceiling actually has this texture. So that's how um, clean this is. It's actually showing the texture Look at that, off the ceiling. So it's not the helmet that has that, it's the ceiling. You can actually see, what is that? It's not popcorn ceiling. Stupid is what it is, but um, you can actually see the texture in the ceiling. That's how, that's how clean it is. I mean, you can literally see my face. That's me, that's, that's my impression of smiling. Yeah, not really. So, um... If you want your helmets to look the shiniest, definitely do this. Um, I don't know if I can get some natural sunlight over here, but I mean, look at just how how clean that is, you know. Um, look at the, I mean, look at the reflection. It's crazy, you know. So if that's what you uh, if that's what you want to obtain in your prints, definitely look into this method. So uh, I'll drop some links in the video description of all these products I use. Uh, if you guys have a comment or question, please let me know. Um, I guess I put my phone around. Uh, if you've liked this video, uh, please let me know. Um, if you find my channel informative, give me a like and subscribe. If there's something that you want to see, um, please, by all means, leave me a comment in one of my videos. Um, drop me a message. Say, hey, man, um, how do you do this? How do you do that? Or if I missed a step, if there was something that wasn't um, explained properly, please, please, please let me know. Um, you know, I have a big passion for doing this. Um, like I said before, um, my, my uh, professional business, the thing that pays my bills is uh, automotive restoration services. So a lot of these things that I use um, in here, I have lying around and I've used this for many, 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 many years. It's just taking that and applying it to what you have in front of you. So I've been doing it for a long time. So I kind of tend to be quick on the trigger and just things fly off the tip of my tongue right off the top of the dome. Um, if something wasn't explained thoroughly enough or you're not sure, just leave me a comment, guys. Let me know. Um, I can definitely redo a video or, or do different things. Um, you know, all of us started, you know, at some point and people are just looking to get things to look better and better. Um, I know when I started doing it, I was like, man, that helmet looks awesome. I wonder how that guy did that. And then I was like, eh, I think I have an idea. And I just started messing around. So hopefully these videos help you. Um, if you're not sure of anything, please let me know. And again, uh, thank you to all my followers and subscribers, uh, on the channel. Um, as this channel grows, we're going to do more and more things. Hopefully I can get to a level to where, um, you know, the channel gets popular. I can start doing some giveaways, things like that. Um, you know, maybe even like mentoring, things like that. Um, the channel just has to grow, you know, so that's why I'm doing these videos, trying to get the exposure, trying to show you guys what to do. Uh, eventually we'll be doing that to that and all that. I mean, look at all my towels. I told you I do this for a living. <laughs> um, you know, we'll be doing that to the full suit. Well, kind of lost the phone there. Um, but yeah, please guys like, and subscribe, follow the channel. Let me know what you guys want to see. Let me know if this helped you. Um, We'll be wrapping up this helmet here. We'll have the full video of the Mark 50, whole process beginning to end. I'm gonna finish thing up, this thing up. I thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you next time. Watch me grow taller. Yeah, rabbit's watches in his pocket. Yeah, he stays late. But he leads me, so I follow.
Thank you.